So, ladies and gentlemen, dear mentors, Professor Wüthrich, and of course, dear student, students. Um, well, some of you might have read the abstract booklet of the conference, and uh, those of you probably have the impression that this presentation is going to be on the topic of neurodegeneration and the role of autoimmunity in neurodegeneration. So this raises the first obvious question, what is neurodegeneration? Well, usually when I tell my friends that I work on the field of neuroscience and neurodegeneration, the first impression they have is that it's something to do with the brain, and that is quite right. But let's go just a little bit deeper. So when talking about neurodegeneration, I can think of at least two different approaches. And one of them is a socioeconomic point of view. And socioeconomically speaking, I can say that neurodegenerative disorders are a terrible and devastating burden. The annual healthcare cost of neurodegenerative disorders is about $1,000 billion. That, that is a vast amount, and that is the yearly sum. Now, just in comparison, the national net worth of Hungary is about one-third of this, $300 billion. But this is a scientific presentation, so let's look at this from a scientific point of view. So neurodegeneration, by definition, is the decline in the function or structure of neurons. And based on what kind of neurons and what kind of anatomical regions does it involve, we can differentiate these disorders. The most well-known are Alzheimer's, Huntington's, Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, and the topic of this presentation, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So why is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis so special? Why, why does it interest us? Well, ALS, as the abbreviation stands, is a so-called motor neuron disorder. This means that it primarily involves motor neurons. Motor neurons are responsible for the innervation of skeletal muscles. And as these neurons degenerate, the muscles lose their innervation. And the patients are, are faced with a functional loss and paralysis. So this basically means that the patients become unable to move, unable to speak, to eat, and when the degeneration reaches the respiratory muscles, unable to breathe. Now, this only happens in about three years from the diagnosis. So we must say that ALS is a progressive disorder. And unfortunately, it is also incurable. The only available treatment in Hungary prolongs lifetime by about three months. And that's not a lot. So let's go back to my main question. Why is ALS interesting for us? And the answer actually is very simple. To study Huntington's, Alzheimer's, or Parkinson's on human samples, you would need brain samples. You would need to do brain biopsies. And that raises very serious ethical questions. But in the case of ALS, as it involves motor neurons, you can find the axonal end, the axon terminals in skeletal muscles. And this way, you would only need muscle biopsies to study it on human samples. And since the pathomechanism, the pathological features behind these disorders are very similar, by understanding one of the disorders, you get to know more about all of them. So these pathological features are mentioned. I mentioned, so I can think of at least a dozen different mechanisms that are activated as the disease progresses. And they form a very complex system, and they are all interconnected in a way that they enhance the effect of one another and point towards neuronal degeneration in a self-perpetuating way. Now, these different mechanisms involved pathological protein aggregation, oxidative stress, glutamate excitotoxicity, and the topic of this presentation, autoimmunity. So, Autoimmunity is the immune response of an organism against its own cells and own tissues. So the keywords here are against its own. 
And the most well-known example of this in neurodegeneration is multiple sclerosis. It has a very well-established and well-described autoimmune origin. And as the immune system activates, it is going to target oligodendrocytes that are responsible for the myelin sheath around the axons. And as, and as these oligodendrocytes degenerate, it is going to cause a myelin dysfunction, hence the name demyelinating disease. Now, MS is special in this aspect, since the rest of the neurodegenerative disorders do not have an autoimmune origin. Actually, in most of neurodegenerative disorders, we do not know what causes it. And that is also the case for ALS. It has an unknown origin, but in about 10 cases, 10% uh, of the cases, there have been mutations identified, but none to do with autoimmunity. So how does autoimmunity come into the picture then? Well, as motor neuronal degeneration progresses, autoimmunity activates in secondary and tertiary mechanisms. And in ALS, it, it appears in the form of anti-motoneuronal antibodies. Now, these are antibodies that specifically target motoneurons, but not just the degenerating motoneurons, but the still healthy ones as well. So this way, it is going to enhance motoneuronal degeneration. Now, these antibodies are going to be really important from the aspect of our experiments. So there is a so-called passive transfer treatment that is based on these antibodies. Basically, the blood serum of diagnosed ALS patients is taken, and it is injected into healthy mice. And since the blood serum contains those antibodies I just mentioned, it is going to cause neuro motoneuronal degeneration, and we can evaluate these changes. So, on the upper half of this diagram, you can see the results of a so-called functional test. And this is based on the hanging reflex of animals. And the hanging time is in association with the muscle strength, the muscular function of the animals. So what you can see here, that this was a 75-day long experiment. And during the duration of the experiment, we could see a functional regression concerning the muscle strength. And on the lower half of the diagram, you can see the motoneuronal number and the changes in motoneuronal number in the spinal cord. And what we observed, that during the duration of the experiment, there was a decline in the number of motoneurons, and this paralleled very well with the functional loss that we could observe. So basically this means that the blood serum inoculation of ALS patients into mice can cause functional regression and loss of motor neurons. But we were very interested to see what kind of morphological alterations might be behind these mechanisms. So I understand that these might be a little bit tricky, especially for yes, high school students. These are electron microscopic images of neuromuscular junctions. I will try my best to guide you through it. So if you look at the picture on the left, this is a healthy uh, neuromuscular junction structure. So neuromuscular junctions are the axonal end of motor neurons. The axon terminals can be found. And this can be found in muscle samples. Now, here you can see the so-called presynaptic terminal. And inside, you can see normal mitochondrial structure. You can see the junction of folds here and the postsynaptic membrane. And in between the pre- and postsynaptic membrane, the synaptic cleft. You can also see a normal synaptic vesicle content. Now, on the image on the right, you can see a sample from a mice treated with ALS serum. Now, what you can see here is that the mitochondrial structure shows sign of ultrastructural damage. The mitochondria are dilated, their inner membrane structure is disrupted, and those black dots, those black deposits you can see inside of them, that is intramitochondrial calcium. 
Now, something you must know about calcium is that it is essential for cells, essential for neurons, for as basic functions as neurotransmission. But when calcium level elevates, it is going to be toxic for neurons. And the rise, the elevation of intramitochondrial or intracellular calcium level is always an indicator of neuronal degeneration. Now, I'm going to show a few further images. These are also degenerating neuromuscular junctions. What you can see here, that there is, in the presynaptic terminal, there is a vacuolization process going on. And also the same mitochondrial degenerative signs are present. And on the right side, you can see that the whole presynaptic structure is filled by an empty vacuolum. Now, there is just a lonely mitochondria down there, and there is basically no synaptic vesicle con uh, content, and this synapse basically has no function anymore. This is the end stage of synaptic degeneration. Now, please look back to the left again. This image is also a neuromuscular junction, and you can see the same vacuolization process going on. Now, this sample on the left is taken from a human patient suffering from ALS. So this means that the morphological, the neuropathological alterations that we could induce by the blood serum inoculation of ALS patients creates a very similar kind of degener degeneration that we can see in ALS patients. So this means that this is a valid ALS model. And based on the success of these experiments, we were very eager to see this another, in, a, in another set of experiments. Now, I would like to refer back to one of the morning presentations by Jofia Nagy, uh, working at the Department of Genetics. And uh, her topic was different mutations in ALS. So I mentioned that ALS has an unknown origin, but in about 10% of the cases, there have been mutations identified. And the Department of Genetics identified a certain mutations in a subpopulation of ALS patients. Now, based on these mutations, we started a cooperation with the Department of Neurology, where the blood serum of these ALS patients with an identified mutation was injected into mice through this passive transfold treatment. And this way, as we grouped the mice based, mouse based on the mutations, we could look at the phenotypic differences. We could look at the mutations separately. So very shortly, because I believe I'm running out of time, uh, this is the last graph I'm going to show you. This shows the intracellular calcium content uh, quantified. These are the control groups. There was an untreated and healthy serum-treated control group. And what you can see here, that in each of the mutations, there was an elevation of intracellular calcium content. Also, those periodic cases were where no mutations were identified. And this elevation was outstanding in the case of one certain mutation. This was actually chromosome 9 operating frame 72. And unfortunately, this finding parallels very well with uh, clinical experiences where clinicians are faced with a very rapid disease progression in the case of such mutation. So at the end of my presentation, I would like to summarize my results. So first of all, we demonstrated that the inoculation of ALS patients' blood serum causes motoneuronal degeneration. And secondly, these neuropathological features induced were present in all of the examined mutations, but to different extent. Now, both of these statements outline the importance of autoimmunity, not just in ALS, but in neurodegeneration generally. Uh, and as for future, uh, immunotherapies and immunotreatments uh, can be a very promising uh, target as for uh, neuroautoimmunity. And uh, let that be the last thought. 
And uh, finally, I would like to thank my mentor, a junior mentor, and uh, all my coworkers for their extensive support and work. And of course, all of you for your very kind attention.